Greetings, gentle viewers! Are you ready to see the violence of the lambs? Some rams who are truly bad to the bone, and... You know, maybe I should save some funds for later. This is from the land where the sheep outnumber the men, women, mixture, neither, miscellaneous, children, and even decent actors. I am, of course, talking about whales! Really? Not whales? Oh. Um, then I am, of course, talking about Ireland! Not even Ireland? What the fuck? Uh, then I am, of course, talking about Vietnam. Vietnam's looking a lot like New Zealand in these shots, and they've a weird way of spelling it in the credits. It almost looks like... I know it's fucking New Zealand! I was doing a fucking bit for the comedy show! In fact, you know what? It's fucking ruined! And if you find yourself reanimated somehow, just fucking do that again, you cunt! We open on the rolling hills of a probable Lord of the Rings location. Sick bastards are tormenting poor sheep on their scramblers. It's like a fuzzy Mad Max. That one guy even has a fucking leg brace. Henry had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. That was meant to be a joke, but he really is mad. Come on, movie, name him Max, or at least male. The sheep he killed was his little brother Henry's pet, and he's a shithead, so... <laughs> So this seems like a rational joke to him. Regardless, the older brother's a bad New Zealander because everyone knows that's not the head they put in the sheep. Oh, and the dad's dead. It was very dramatic. I assume. I can't tell for sure because it happened off screen. Fuck, he was important. Then we're 20 years later and Henry is turned into a full-on sheepophobe. I assume that's the word, and if it's not, then I equally assume that the minions are currently rewriting the fucking dictionary! A aardvark, a long-nosed creature designed to serve the mistress. Bit unfair of him to get a phobia for sheep just because his brother murdered and desecrated his pet sheep. The sheep's literally the only one involved who did nothing wrong. It's like finding your black best friend murdered and reacting by joining the KKK. Nothing like it, eh? God's green earth, all creatures great and small. Oh, I once had that Peter Jackson in the back of my cab. Shut up, there's only 20 people in this country and three of them are Peter Jackson. So Henry's returned to the old family farm because his brother wants to buy up his half. He's turned it into a family reunion slash face your fears thing. Elsewhere, some eco-warriors have broken into the farm to free slash kill the sheep. This isn't going to be like the salmon farm, is it, Grant? Hey, those fish died free. Although, one of those might be an accident. The evil brother is preparing for an important announcement about the future of the sheep. Industry. A new breed of sheep. Dun dun dun! The old field! It's amazing, an invisible sheep goes perfectly with the invisible audience. Actually, this is just a dry run. Not sure why, I mean, everything will be fine. He has guard Mormons. Wait a sec, guard Mormons? Could a cameo by Suede be far behind? No, I will not be gracing this review with my presence. I am far too busy with these eco-warriors that won't stop messing with my boss's genetically engineered sheep. Did he say genetically engineered sheep? Yes, I did. Well, that's the movie spoiled, Dan. It's a good thing it doesn't really care enough to hide anything. So you're still funny about the sheep? It's not about the sheep. Meh. Angus. In other news, I'd like Henry to work through his issues by beheading his brother and wearing his carcass as a suit. So the eco-warriors steal a dead genetically altered lamb and after some hijinks... Uh, dude, did you ever see a razor head? Yeah. Good, well, don't look behind you. <laughs> you might be thinking, huh, this mix of camera style monster horror and physical comedy reminds me of early Peter Jackson. Well, that's because New Zealand passed a law saying that all their films need to either be directed by Peter Jackson or be stylistically similar to at least two of his films. <laughs> it happened in the wake of the Truth About Demons affair. It nearly brought down the government. Anyway, what's going on with the brothers? You're a dick. I am a dick. You're a dick. I am indeed a dick. You're a dick. Yes, I'm still a dick. 
Anyway, the housekeeper rescued one of the late father's shearing trophies from being thrown out. The golden shears. Best shearer in the country. Your father said you were a natural too. Mm-hmm. Chekhov's family and sheep based symbolic stabbing thing. Henry is taken on a trip up to the top of the farm because if you left, then the movie would have to use Chris Taylor from The Chaser here as the lead, and that's just not practical. I mean, the script is already written, and Henry reminds me of Film Brain. That's got nothing to do with anything, but it's true. Anyway, there seems to be a slight subtext of farm equals masculine, and city dwelling equals wussy queer poofta. If this is accurate, then I expect the great New Zealand cities of Christchurch, Wellington, and Koi Horo are filled with gangs of disaffected young men in jeans and tartan shirts, assaulting people for being insufficiently good at Farmville. Anyway, the mutant sheep is on its merry, mutant sheepy way. Mama. Mama, mama. Mama. And, as per usual, when you turn into a sheep, the first big change is the need to eat rabbits. <laughs> New Zealand sheep are metal as fuck. So Henry and Chris Taylor from The Chaser team up with the most human of the eco-warriors, and she's called... Experience. It's been so far. <laughs> I'll just call her X because I'm pretty sure she's based on someone else. I know that's not just for the sake of a stupid nickname. Okay, it is a bit. Mostly. Yeah, so I don't have to say experience every time I mention her. I estimate the review would be 15 seconds longer if I called her by her full name. Or shorter than if I'd not gone on this whole tangent. Anyway, they find evidence of evil killer sheep, and that evidence comes in the form of nearly being killed by an evil killer sheep. Oh, Jesus, man, it's not gonna bite. Uh, it's making quite a good go of trying to bite through the door. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with him? You run away first! What is wrong with you? Ovidophobia, my. What's that? Just a completely unfounded and irrational fear that one day this is gonna happen! Oh! Fear of being on my show! I didn't realise that had a name. Fascinating. Send a card to most people I know with that word on it and my regrets. And a naked picture of Alistair to say sorry? Sure, why not? Give it the fuckers a whole new fear. Whoa! Oh, my. thank you! Alright. Mm -hmm. How did Diamanda Hagen know I'm terrified of sheep? It's a good one, though. Yeah, this one's going on my wall. There we go. Good girls. They're fine. You need to ground yourself. You're a tree. You want him walking. Trees don't walk! Unless you're in Middle Earth, which you are. Well played, black sheep. They get to the van okay, but wouldn't you know, they have the terrible luck to choose a sheep delivery vehicle. <laughs> if you squint, it looks like he's beating up a Muppet. So Chris Taylor gets away and typical sheep fucking drivers, he takes the van over the cliff. <laughs> ready to turn all the fish from here to Malaysia into aquatic ware sheep. Born free, as free as the wind blows. <laughs> so they decide to head for the house and warn everyone about what's going on. Then what? Then I get as far away from here as I can. The furthest country from New Zealand is probably Ireland, and make a guess what they've got a lot of there. That's right! Greenery! And coastline! And probably sheep. Come and play with us, Daddy. Oh, the poor eco-warriors slowly but surely turning into Bruce Spence. It's funny, but in New Zealand, even the were-sheep look like orcs. Get the fuck off my land! Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! It's 
scum like Hester and Rush and your brother need to answer to somebody sometime. Someone who likes animals, you don't like people very much, do you? <gasps> I would have thought that you of all people would appreciate efforts to deconstruct the colonialist, paternalistic, agrarian hierarchy that disenfranchises the Tanga to Whenua and erodes the natural resources of Aotearoa. Learn all that at university, did you? Yeah, the University of Tumblr. Well, he went to their great rival, the University of Reddit, and majored in TIA. They're both prats, but at least she's trying to achieve something. So Tucker's been bitten, but there's no time for emotions because she. Don't wait for me! I'm not leaving you behind! What about the sheep? Well, back the sheep! I'm pretty sure that I'll just get him more infected. Go home! Get gone! They send the sheepdog off to be eaten in revenge by those he once tormented, while the humans take refuge in the genetics laboratory. I assume doctors Moreau, West, Pretorius, and Frankenstein are hard at work, just off screen. What is this? I told you. Agricultural science. You know, it just occurs to me that the older brother badly needs a nickname. I dub thee Square Jaw McWasp Man. Using a well timed needle filled with pure plot necessity, the doctors capture Chris Taylor while Henry and XP escape. But it's out of the frying pan and into the larger, warmer, and probably worse smelling frying pan because the sheep get involved. <laughs> Help me, Angus! That's the thing about farms, Henry. Accidents happen. Okay, a few points. One, how could he hear what Squarejaw is saying over the sound of the sheep? He's practically whispering. Two, how could he expect Squarejaw to save him? There's about 50 sheep between them. And it's not like we needed this scene to know he's a cunt. He spent every second on screen nearly literally writing, I am a cunt on his own forehead. <laughs> And now they've officially jumped out of the frying pan and landed in the fire. Fire might be played by rotting meat. Shouldn't there be flies and shit about? The weather's hot and this is exposed meat. Unless all the flies in a few miles have been turned into miniature wear sheep and we just can't see them. Mmm, ironically it tastes like mutton. Mmm, you smell great. Stop it, there's more humans to eat. And away, why aren't the sheep jumping in after them? Actually, wait, how did the sheep climb the fence? There's something in here. They can't be. Well, that have to. Jump. Movie, you can't just avoid a question by answering an earlier one. NOA XB suddenly develops. I have to get out of here. And then undevelops claustrophobia. Just in time for this. I'm stuck! <laughs> That'll teach you a fucking tit! <laughs> I'm really not seeing why his casual shoes are sheep proof and Chris Taylor's boots were like paper mache. Except for the obvious, you know, plot immunity. Anyway, if Moses was a Kiwi, then the story would have involved much more elves. And the burning bush would have looked like this. I am the god of thy father, the god of Abraham, the god of Isaac, and the god of Jacob. Using the caves, they escape to their side of the farm. Where are they come across? Arnold Sheepsenigger. My bird is ready! Grant? Yep, this hulking piece of mutton is Grant, the other eco-warrior. Much buffer now than he was as a human. Seriously, this is like some brave star shit. I want him to pull out a laser cannon and fight alongside an offensive Native American stereotype. Grant? What's that on your face? Have you been eating meat, Grant? Was it even organic? No, it was one of those plasma-based rabbits that you see in zoos! Something must have bitten him. You mean... Oh, Tucker? No! You know, it occurs to me that this film is failing at being appropriately Peter Jackson-ish. You see, in a self-respecting Peter Jackson movie, these evil scientists would be subtle. They'd all have German accents and wear Nazi armbands. Lucky for you, your Uncle Heinrich's a pretty good joker, huh? Uh, subtlety! Is truly a lost art. You know, it occurs to me that this could be a secret Illuminati metaphor for FEMA camps and how Mexican gays are planning to steal people's guns using chemtrails. Wake up, sheeple! <laughs> ah. Good work. Carry on, as you were. I'm gonna have so much fun turning into all kinds of animals, for I am evil! I think we might try and replicate the effect on you with some of these cult desires. Fucking called it! Konnichiwa. Guten Tag. Yora. G'day. Oh, shit, he's so far gone he thinks he's Australian. 
It's a scientific fact that genetically, Australians have more in common with sheep than they do with you or I. Now that is scientific fact. There's no real evidence for it, but it is scientific fact. This is taking a bit. I hope something fun happens in the meantime. Something like a scientist deciding that a white lab coat makes her immune to killer sheep. Ugh. The big question is, how can there be so many killer sheep and yet have none of them anywhere near this get together? They're hunting and killing humans on sight. How did they miss 40 people coming onto the land in their cars, parking and moving en masse to this location? It's not even that far from where they're hanging out. But, rule of silly. Black sheep, I'll forgive you if the scientist gets a funny death. <laughs> okay, I assume that was funny. <laughs> Time to meet the star of our show, I suppose. I give you the old field. Holy shit, I've never seen a sheep before. That is amazing. Either that, or they think this is the unveiling of a new state-of-the-art, movable, interactive, self-forming leisure center. I give you the old field. <laughs> old field is my slave name. You should address me, boy. Fergabald de Colossus, mate. The mate being part of the name. Mate. Quiet now. Quiet, my pretty. Everything he knows about sex, he learned from a Woody Allen movie. Buns. It is these who follow the lamb wherever he goes, for they are spotless. That'll teach you to read the Bible as sheep. They find it really offensive. They're constantly compared to Christians in it. Anyway, die, 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 probably die, die, and obligatory sheep fucking. I mean, in the movie. I'm pretty sure something's already happened in the review. Three times. Once you go bad, bad black sheep, you're not going bad, bad back sheep. Anyway, they picked up the housekeeper at some point. Don't ask when. Such questions just make the episode longer. And run into the Eco Warrior again. And I didn't realize how badly I wanted a World of Darkness wear sheep book until now. Anyway, acupuncture to save the day. <laughs> acupuncture point causes temporary paralysis. Or coma if I did it wrong. Yeah, except he's now a sheep, so his body's different. You probably just made his heart explode. You might as well turn him into a haggis for epic meal time. Anyway, they find Squarejaw deep in the basket of sheep-based afterglow. What are you doing in here? Animal husbandry does not work like that! I understand you got a pretty fucked up idea of animal husbandry. Okay, their line was better than mine. So this new genetically altered sheep was invented by taking Henry and his brother's DNA and doing something with sheep, resulting in this part-human hybrid that he's in love with. You know, I think this might lead to a whole new definition of incest. So Henry feels that he needs to finally become his father's son or something, and picks up the shearing trophy from earlier on, ready to use it with all the might of symbolism! Squarejaw's taking his love to his private plane, ready for the honeymoon of a lifetime. Now where does he think he's going? He can't leave if he's contaminated, it could affect the whole country. Could you tell? Really? Could anyone? Really? <laughs> Could ya? Be honest? Anyway, Henry's been bitten, so it's time for him to ram up and kill the shit out of his brother. Because that's what sheep do. Anyway, mm-hmm, the kissing scene. Ugh, oh, straight people. Always fucking falling in love after random shenanigans. Why can't they just meet in a bar and fuck each other up the ass? You know, like Alistair did. Ironically, with Alistair, it's a really long story. They're very happy together. So how is he going to catch up with them? Well, via stealth sheepskin. This whole thing is funnier when you remember that poultry guy says someone try this, and unlike here, it didn't work. Making this less logical than a fucking trauma movie. Of course, it could maybe have something to do with him being a sheep now. I suppose. I am a sheep. So older brother has gone full beast, man, and as any Warhammer fan can tell you, that's a mistake. Because even if he wins the fight, he's just going to have to head for the nearest Chaos Warband and probably end up enslaved. Kids, stay in school, study hard, don't do drugs, except for the fun ones, obviously. I never ever go gore! Now it is the end! Oh, 
the sheer goal of that. Stabbing him with shears. It's a pun. <laughs> okay, I know it wasn't great, but there's no need to react like that. You know, it's a pity that's not where Squarejaw dies because being stabbed to death with his father's shearing trophy? That's like symbolism! Cubed! <clears throat> and so? Hey, it just occurred to me that the big brother really skimped on security personnel in this place. This could have gone so much better if he wasn't such a sheepskate! Speak up! Hold him, boy! Bite the sheepdog! Bite him, then it'll be a sheepdog sheep! Nah, I just hold him there long enough for the plane to slice him into a year's worth of Sunday roasts. Of course, now the plane will be infected and I'll have to deal with flying sheep. That is, unless the film's just about over. And given that Chris Taylor is driving around like an anti wear sheep potion dispensing superhero, I'd say that the film is just about over. Pull your finger up, we've got work to do. There's not enough cure for all the sheep, so Square Jaw decides to feed himself to them, giving our heroes time to set the methane from their farts on fire. The other eco warrior gets a fate worse than exploding because he's stuck being himself. And in the end, I get my sheepdog sheep. <coughs> oh, fuck yeah! This is like a really good cover version of a great Peter Jackson original. Beat for beat, it's aping the style of his early work. Just not as gory or out there. And I'm not complaining, it's good. It's fun, it's ridiculous. In short, it's all you could ever want from a wear sheep movie. But it's still very derivative of Peter Jackson's early stuff. That's not a problem because I love his early stuff, but if you know his stuff, then you can't help but notice it. It kind of makes the film a little less fun. Anyway, I'm Demanda Harvin, and I have to live with that every single fucking day, and you don't, so fuck off. <sighs> Join me next time for an Australian film. An Australian film with a special guest who does not know that he's going to be a guest next time, and he will not enjoy it.